I put up a, a short video um, because I'm getting so many questions about where I'm from. I've had a lot of pushback on telling people saying, don't say where you live. Suze, you can look it up online. It's, you of can course, find it in two seconds. People say that all the time. You people know. tell me that. Yeah. Or you put too much information on it's out there anyway. Yeah. It's all out there. How come you tell people that you have a door in your bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, leaves to it's right into my bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So people could come to your door. I went, and and what? What are they going to steal? Mm. There's nothing to you. Steal. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, he said he said that, and I went, well, good luck to him. <laughs> yeah. But mine, yeah, they wouldn't. They'd have. They wouldn't even be able to walk in mine right now. Yeah. They'd just be falling down <laughs> over everything. So. But I don't understand the fear. And yeah, but you tell them where you live. You should, don't show them your house. You can Google it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, what's it matter? Yeah. So, they've been asking a lot about background and stuff, and it's easier to talk with someone who's mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And what I said today is. Um, and I did put it up, you know, I'm from Dighton, Mass. Just how close we are to Boston, Providence, mm -hmm. the, the Cape, and the Atlantic. And that it was a good place to raise kids. Mm -hmm. One of the things, I want to talk about how we have no diversity. Right. And she said, just say it's a small New England town. Suze, that doesn't tell anybody anything. I've got people from all over the world yeah. following yes. this. We well, never have had any diversity at right. all. Well, I look back when, when in the 60s. Yeah. Um, we had nothing. We had migrants doing the farm. Yes. And now we're 97 percent. 97 percent Caucasian. Yeah. But we are not a diverse community. Oh, no. no. And then I said, I wanted to say, our background is Portuguese. Yeah. Was a lot of Portuguese people settled here. Yes. Or came here yeah. after they got over here. I don't know how or why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't know why. But they were farmers. And, when I, and that I do want to talk about because I think you and I are both on the same page with Dighton. We had a North Dighton and a South Dighton. Yeah. South Dighton was farm. Yeah. North Dighton was manufacturing. Yes. It was a class difference. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, because absolutely. I think it was a huge difference in South to North, and I thought South was very looked down upon. Yes. And that's what the '60s, '50s, yeah. and '60s. And where I lived, especially yeah. over that hill. Yeah. My God, I was in no man's yeah. land. Yeah. You know, I was almost in Somerset. Yeah. Well, that would have been a step up. <laughs> yeah, it would. <laughs> it would have been a step up. But, because North Dighton doesn't think it was that way. I know it doesn't. And I don't think it is anymore. Now it's just, we've, we've got so much new housing and stuff. When we were in the 60s, we had 6,000 people here, and I looked up the stuff. Really, yeah. Now we've got 88. Wow. Now, and still 97% <laughs> Caucasian. And, and that's new growth. Yeah. But we haven't gotten any more diverse. No. No. Um, no. And to say, you know, what could they possibly want to know? Well, a lot of the world doesn't have grocery stores. They go to the store, they walk, they bike, and get what they need for the yeah. day. Yeah. We could never do that. We don't have a store. No, we didn't have a store. And we still don't. Yeah. If you want to get around a day, you better have a car. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There's We're, no, it's not a walking town, for right. sure. And that's because we don't have sidewalks. <laughs> you know, you'll yeah. get, you can take your life in your hand, uh -huh. walking anywhere, uh -huh. and biking. Uh -huh. And I saw they put signs up now, like, oh, that bikes have the right of way and go down the middle of the road now, in front of cars. Huh. Okay. They're still going to get killed. <laughs> yeah, I know. So they're going to get killed sooner than <laughs> before. <laughs> but, so we don't have any stores. We don't have any manufacturing left. No. There is nothing to move into Dighton for, no. except to as a bedroom community. Yeah, a very expensive bedroom yes. community. Our, our schools have gone down the tubes. Really? Yeah. Um, now kids are going elsewhere to go to high school. I mean, <laughs> growing up, it was it was a great place to grow up. Yeah. Um, but that's because back then we could run around, do things. Absolutely. And you didn't need supervision. No, you didn't. And you didn't need. A leash on you, no, or a bike helmet because you weren't afraid of anything. Right, the parents weren't, you know. All right, have a good yeah. day. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. Um, I certainly enjoyed my younger years on that farm, but it had nothing to do with Dighton. Mm -mm. 
you know, it had yeah. to do with what we what we were allowed to do as kids. Yeah, yeah. And now I see the kids not being allowed to do anything yeah. unless it's in a supervised. Yeah. And I know it's all over the world. Yeah. But looking at that, what can a kid do now unless it's in a group? They don't. They wouldn't know what to do if they were given the opportunity either. Yeah. They have no imaginations. And that's our fault. It is. It is. And I think that's because we wanted to give so much yep. that we gave away their childhood. Yeah. Um, those kids were everywhere. Mm -hmm. And you didn't even think about it twice, you mm -hmm. know. But um, you can't do that anymore. You can't just send your kids off mm -hmm. because you don't know what would happen to them. Because I would say to her, you know, when I was little, yeah. I played outside. I said I was never in the house. No, we weren't allowed in the house. <laughs> My mother used to open the door <laughs> out. <laughs> Come back when the light, when the well, whistle yeah, blows. Yeah, I, yeah. We didn't even have street lights where I lived. <laughs> yeah. well, with us, it was the whistle. Yeah, the whistle. Yeah, the four thirty whistle. Yeah, and so it was. I said we just went out and we played all day long, and, and when we they had said, a what did you play time? with? Nothing. Exactly. That's what she said. What did you play with? And I said, sticks, <laughs> rocks, I don't know, whatever we could find yeah. to suit whatever we were doing in yeah. our imagination. We <laughs> saved the world and we did all this stuff. Yeah. You know, for years we did that. Uh, I said, that's what we did. We didn't have a focus. But we have had so much better imaginations. Uh, they have no imagination. Yeah. They, I think they do, but it's all four color HD. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> yeah, I was talking to somebody that I know. They were talking about not wanting to spoil their kids mm -hmm. and how that how concerned they are of it. And I was saying how happy I was to hear it and how I never met a kid who didn't have more fun playing with a box than the toy. Yeah, that's true. So give them boxes. Yeah, give them boxes. <laughs> what did you get for Christmas growing up? Um, mostly clothes. I'm sure I got toys in the beginning, but I don't really remember when I was little. Um, I didn't have a lot of toys. We didn't have a lot no. of toys in my house. Nobody ever asked me what I wanted for Christmas. Yeah. That wasn't an option. Yeah. And you know, in my life, we got underwear. Uh-huh. And we had to open it <laughs> in front of our pedophile uncle. Oh, God. <laughs> that lived upstairs. So that was his Christmas <laughs> present. <laughs> Um, but we didn't get toys. I remember getting one doll. Yeah. Um, and then my biggest present ever was for my 10th birthday. I got a small frying pan, so I'd stop bugging my mother and asking her to cook an egg in the morning. Oh, God. So I could make my own at 10. Yeah. I remember getting, um, I never had paper dolls. No. Or anything. I never had a Chatty Cathy or any of those, you know. My sister had Chatty Cathy. I had a Kissy doll. A kissy doll. That was the one doll I ever mm -hmm. remember in my mm -hmm. life. I remember having a baby doll, but I don't remember what it was. Yeah. It was like when you, after you opened your presents, there was nothing to play with. <laughs> no, nothing to no. do. You could eat the orange, <laughs> yeah. but that could <laughs> spoil your lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Our stockings always had exactly orange. the same thing. Yep. We got an orange. Nuts. We got some nuts, and we got little, little um, mesh bags with oh, the, the, the chocolates and yes. coin things. Yes, yes we yes. get those. And orange is a, is a European tradition. Is it? Yeah, I don't even remember what it is, but I looked it up once, yes. <laughs> the one thing I do know about my grandfather, my father's mother, is that one, one Christmas she filled the stockings with coal, with real coal. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, that's how bad she Can you imagine what that actually does to a child? No. No. You don't ever get over that. I remember Christmases growing up. Now again, we're talking late fifties probably. Mm -hmm. Of being much more low key. Mm -hmm. Expectations were none. Mm -hmm. you, I don't remember looking forward to Santa coming. It was nice and I enjoyed mm -hmm. it, but not because he was going to bring me something mm -hmm. special. And isn't it funny? Because at this point, I still would like to think: give me one thing that I can really look at and appreciate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think as children, if we had, and we did have that. So outside of, I know, being poor growing up, 
I know what it did to me. It made me want a lot of stuff. Uh -huh. And for a long time, I bought things that I did not right. and should not have. Right. Not so much for the kids, even. Yeah. It's just the pretense of not being poor anymore. Exactly. I know that. <laughs> I yeah. still do that. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, I'm not rich. Yeah. Never will be rich, and that's okay. But what is it that makes you think you have to have that pretense? I just like having stuff. Because we didn't have stuff. Yeah, I'm sure. But does it make us feel, it makes me feel better about myself. Me too. I have and that's great too joy shopping. <laughs> because we to it. couldn't ever get anything. No. Did you ever go out to dinner with, with your family growing up? The only place we ever went, we'd go to Oak Hill. That's where we went. Yeah. And sat in the car. Once a, in a blue yeah. moon. <laughs> yeah, I remember getting a couple of fraps from there. Yeah. Chocolate coffee fraps. Yeah. That my father and, loved and them. And if we ha ordered a hot dog, you know, and a drink, it would be a fine, fine day if we were allowed to get french fries. Yeah. That was like, whoo yeah. <laughs> See, we never once went out to eat yeah. anywhere. Yeah. Um, the first time I ever ate out was when I started working at Oak Hill. Yeah. You know, and I could and make, I find, I had a scallop. I had never had a scallop in yeah, my life. Yeah. Put it in the, what is this? This is wonderful. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Who made that? <laughs> um, did you ever go to a fast food restaurant? Ever go to a Burger King? Because no. we had Burger Kings back then. Because uh -uh. I didn't go to a Burger King until I was 18. I didn't, know. we didn't go to those. No. Um, I have never eaten in a Burger King or a McDonald's. I'm sure that I'm the only living soul on the world. Really? <laughs> yeah. I would take my kids. Yeah. I always took my kids because they wanted to go. Um, and I would just get them what they wanted and sit there and go. <laughs> Started working at Oak Hill at 15. Yeah, I was 14. Yeah. And I remember getting a dime now and then for tips and your pay <laughs> would come in the little envelope because it would be a couple of bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I waitressed in a lot of places. Yeah, see, I only waste waitressed at Oak Hill and then Friendly's for a while. Mm -hmm. I hated it, absolutely hated it, because I was so shy and so scared of going to the tables. Oh, And yeah. it was just torture for me. I enjoyed waitressing because I, I was, I made them laugh. Yeah. You know, we joked around, blah, 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 you know. Yeah, yeah you have a I much better personality for that. I, today, could do it after yeah. all the years at the salon. Yeah. I was scared to death. Yeah. Yeah. And the guys had just come home from Vietnam when I was working there, mm -hmm. and they were all in there, and they're, what, eight years older than I am? Mm. So I was, I was this young yeah, yeah. waitress. Yeah. Scared, I was scared yeah. out of my mind. Yeah. Didn't it seem, could have just been me growing up, that somebody was always at you, telling you what to do? No? Well, no, because you had your parents who told you what to do. Yeah. And I didn't. <laughs> yeah. I had my parents, I had Louise and Russell um, until we, I was 12, but the teachers always had such high expectations, and I, I'm a people pleaser, so I, you know, when I went to school, I wanted to do well, but not for me. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I put all that pressure on myself, mm -hmm. most likely. My parents didn't have any expectations. Yeah. Well, I, if, I came, you know, if I came home, well, math was just horrible for me. And I had a C, you know, everything else. And they'd say, oh, did you do your best? And I'd say, yep. And they'd say, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, nobody cared, you know. Yeah. My just, parents would look at it, we never, I never remember them, they looked at me poor cuts, but they didn't care. Mm -hmm. And I had A's, mm -hmm. and they didn't care. Yeah. You know, nobody ever said good job, bad job, yeah. nothing. Yeah. They signed it and gave it back to you. The only thing my parents ever did, I shouldn't say it that way, but eighth grade, we had to take Latin because I was in the top group. I don't understand why I have to take Latin. Now, this is me then, this is me. Mm -hmm. Why do I have to take Latin? Because you're in group A. Mm -hmm. I don't want to take Latin. Well, you have to because you're in group. Then I want to be in group B. Mm -hmm. No, you belong in group A, but I don't want to take Latin. Right. And I'm not going to take Latin. And it's the first time I dug myself that deep. Mm -hmm. And my parents ended up going in, and I had an F and meeting with the principal with me in the room at, in eighth grade and they said you know she won't do it and my parents went why won't you do it and i went because i don't want to take latin mm -hmm. 
when it's not a speaking language, no, nobody can tell me why. That, yeah. Well, if they had explained themselves, but of course nobody would, you know, that it's the basis of all language and mm -hmm. you can learn a lot, I would have done it because mm -hmm. that would have made sense. But nobody explained things ever. You're mm -hmm. just supposed to do it. And I, I remember my parents saying to them, she's not going to do it. Yeah. Because my parents didn't know what to do with me. Right. <laughs> you know, like, they're looking at the principal like, can't you handle this? Yeah. And yeah. The, the, the way they handled it was, okay, she's going to sit in it. She won't take any tests. She won't participate. But she has to be in that class and just take an F for the year. How stupid is that? And that's what they had me do. Oh, my God. And I sat there, and they'd take a test, and I'd pass it overhead. And I, can you imagine how pissed off the teacher must have been? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's ridiculous. And I sat there all year with a smirk on my face. Yeah. Jeez. And learned nothing from it except I can win. Yeah. And I brought home from somewhere an American flag, and I hung it in the window. I took the curtain down, and I hung the flag up there. Well, my God, if you'd think I had burned the flag up there. Really? <laughs> yeah. My mother went crazy. Why? She didn't want people to see that. She didn't think it was right. I, you know, it's a flag. You're not. You're disrespecting. And I said, I'm not disrespecting it. I'm sure, I'm I, I want it. I'm it. Yes. it. You know. And uh, we actually got into a fight. And I said, There's nothing wrong with me having that there. And my mother looked at me and said, It's about time. Because I had never yep. talked. Never. You know. Yep. Never talked back. Wow. I said, well, damn. <laughs> yeah. What did I miss? I know. <laughs> <laughs> and you know my story of being beaten. Mm -hmm. um, and my mother used a wooden spoon. And because she would break, break the blood vessels in her hand if she oh, hit you and she'd yeah. show you. Look what you made me do. Oh, I don't think Did I made you mother do that. hit you. Yeah. Oh. Um, my father beat me, but my mother yeah. hit me. Um, and I was 14, and my sisters remember this. And I, she, she reached out to do the and I grabbed her hands. The first time I ever yeah. grabbed, and she couldn't get away from me. Yeah. And she started crying. And my sisters were so, leave mommy alone, because they were four years, yeah. five years younger. I stood there and held on with that victory of, yes. I'm not going to get hit. Yes. This, I just stopped it and yes. said to her, you will never touch me yeah. again. Yeah. And that was when I was 14. That was yeah. the last time she hit me. And I scared her. The, the empowerment I felt, you know, it didn't stop my father from hitting me, yeah. and he was bigger, so I couldn't stop right. him. <laughs> but the fact that I got more powerful than her yes. was a huge turning oh, point yeah. for me. I, I, I totally get that. I totally get that. When she turned 15, she changed overnight <laughs> like this. It was a different person altogether. Yeah. And she and I were butt heads so bad. And we were in the kitchen once, and... Um, she raised her hand to me, and I said, wait a minute, make it good. I, you've got one shot. I won't even try to stop you. Just make sure you knock me out. <laughs> <laughs> and she, did, she yeah. didn't do it. Yeah, right. I told every man I ever dated, yeah. don't ever touch me like that, because yeah. I will kill you. Yeah. I might have to wake up first yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and get my strength back, but I will well, kill yeah. you. Yeah. I will kill you. That's what I had said. Nobody will ever. Yeah, do that and to I never got day. hit. I wasn't, you know, I yeah. wasn't hit. So, um, but I, I just knew that that wasn't going to happen. Did you? we all screw them up? You know, there's no way out of it. Nope. We oh. all screw them up. I used to say to my kids, "You didn't come with a manual. They didn't <laughs> give me anything when I left with you." Uh, I think that's the worst thing from uh, growing up, because. I remember being worried about how, what I, how I raised my kids. Mm -hmm. I don't think my parents ever worried about how they raised us. No, no. <laughs> I don't think there was a care in the world about how we turned out. No. But I don't think my parents, I mean, my parents weren't parents. Yes, yeah, they, they no. I can say with no doubt at all, never once in my life did my parents either hug me or say they loved me. Yeah. Not once. That, that went on in the earlier years, I remember that, but not in the later years. Why, they told you they loved you in the yeah. later years? Oh, and no, no, in the earlier years. Oh, I did they? That, yeah. yeah. No, we never got that. But then it... We got brush your teeth and go to bed. Me too. So yes. there's a lot of... What? You know me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I come with the house. <laughs> You're lucky to be here. <laughs> I don't think that was a horrible thing. In fact, I kind of think being just there... Mm-hmm. 
is better than a lot of kids have it today, where they are the center of the universe mm -hmm. and, and have such helicopter parents. Um, I didn't have, you know, we played ball, we played, I was a cheerleader. My parents never even knew. They didn't care. They never mm -hmm. came to a game. They never asked how it was. Mm -hmm. We weren't allowed to eat between meals or open the refrigerator. Oh, we could. Be oh, see, no. Yeah. You couldn't open. I would never have thought in my home to open the refrigerator. It wasn't allowed. Yeah. That's food for meals. Yeah. Now, part of that was being extremely poor, but the other part was it was my mother's. It wasn't ours. Yeah. We weren't normally left alone, yeah. but then we would lock the door just to keep my uncle out. Ay, was... And we got 10 cents a bus on Saturdays to wash every window inside mm -hmm. the seats and sweep the floor, 10 cents. And after we got left in the buses, Russell would try to get it, come in to the bus. Oh and we would lock the bus and he'd know. But you couldn't tell anybody. Yeah. Nobody would have cared. Yeah. Just constantly trying to yeah. protect yourself as a child. Yeah. Do you remember in the 50s, the um, shantytown, the farm, and behind the house, it's a, it's a house set back from the road a little bit. It was a nice house in its day. They had a shantytown of all shacks and full of, we had diversity. Really? And it was really bad, and my father used to take me there. <laughs> <laughs> and my mother would scream at him. But there was one really nice family. They called his name was Preacher. I remember Preacher. Yeah, that's the and only him, black person I knew. Yep. Yeah. Him and his wife were nice, nice people. Mm -hmm. Both of them were illiterate. Where did they come from? Where I was... do not know, because they weren't there in the winter. Yeah. Yeah, they would go back, but they were itinerant workers. Yes. Um, and they had a, a shanty. But it was, she kept it nicely. It was a dirt mm -hmm. floor. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what she had to cook with, but one day my father went there, and I'm sure it was for nefarious purposes because it was not a place she should be. But he, he left me in her house with her while him and Preacher went to do something. And it might have been to hurt somebody mm -hmm. because there was yeah. knife fights and yeah. you name it on uh, Friday nights. Yeah. I don't know how many buildings, but I remember it very distinctly. And Friday nights when they got paid, that's when Mason and I had a couple cops there because they would go to the package store mm -hmm. and let off steam. Yeah. And there was always a rest on Friday night. Yeah. We had um, Puerto Rican men yeah. that came every year. Some of them were the same people. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that was a bad thing. In any way, I don't mean it as a put down. Those people worked very, very high mm -hmm. and they were itinerant workers. Mm -hmm. That was their life. Yeah. Yeah. And I got into it once, but oh, she yeah. said, that's slavery. And I said, well, you know, we didn't make them come. Yeah. They chose to, came, to come. Yeah. Uh, they were paid. I don't know what they were paid. You yeah. know, they said Was it a fair home. wage? Probably not. Probably nobody, not. Yeah, nobody nobody got it. You know, they lived in a nice place. Yeah. We had that whole giant barn yeah. that was, the whole downstairs was wide open with, you know, couches and chairs and all the kitchen and the tables yeah. and all. And upstairs where it was like a dormitory. Like a bunk, bunk house, yeah. And I said, um, you know, Friday night, Friday after they got paid, my grandfather would take them down to Main Street to yeah. go to the store. Yeah, <laughs> the packing. Yeah, and they'd get their stuff and they'd come home and they'd drink. Yeah. And they'd be sitting out there playing the guitars and singing and... I don't remember ever there being a fight yeah. there. See, Mendoza's ever. was much worse. There was, yeah. there was and that, but it was a bigger thing too. There were a lot of shanties, yeah, um, and a lot of people. I know, um, yeah. But I don't see anything wrong, and that's going to sound wrong, with the way it was done because it was voluntary. They were looking for work. You gave them work. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, would it would it have been better? Could there have been better circumstances? Absolutely. Were they any worse off than? Anyone else? I'm not sure they were. I don't think they were. You know, because I know we were bad off. Yeah. Oh, we were too. Yeah. Um, we did have the luxury of having a, a, a secure roof over our heads. Mm -hmm. I think that was the only thing we had yeah. above our yeah. tenement workers. Yeah, we didn't have anything. Her, her point to me was that they couldn't make any money where they lived, and so we brought them over here and paid them next to nothing mm -hmm. and then sent them home. And I said, well, I never really looked at it. I never looked yeah. at it like that at all. These guys were so nice to us kids, yeah. except when I got to be like 13 or something, my father said, you can't go up there anymore. Yeah. So I used to go up there and hang out, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> I grew up with these guys. Yeah. I just remember it. 
being a different time. Yeah. And, you know, could it have been done better? Not at the time. No, I thought it was fine. No. I, to hurt they worked hard. Yeah. They worked they very, very work hard. hard. Yeah. Um, but my father worked very, very hard. Yeah. Your father worked very, very yeah. hard. So it's it's just a different kind of work very, very hard. Yeah. If they were sitting on their butts counting the money, uh -huh. that would be one thing. Uh -huh. But they were out there working too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, so I don't think anybody got taken advantage of. Yeah. It's such a different world, and I wish that we documented it better because our own children, my kids, know nothing about how yeah. we were raised and don't care to. They don't. It's terrible. You know, and I think, but it was such an idyllic childhood in so many ways. Yes. As tough as it was, I would want my childhood versus a kid's childhood oh, yeah, today. me too. We had a ball. Yeah. Because yeah. we were sitting, you know, our house was sitting on like 25 acres or yeah. something. So we were everywhere. We were just everywhere yeah. in that farm. Yeah. You know? And I didn't have that luxury, but I had the luxury of having the river right there, and I could sit out yeah. and, and just look I at the know, river. That's wonderful. Um, you know, I couldn't go to the river without being. Right. You know. Right. I had. Have I ever told you my father, who was looking for reasons to hurt me because I was the strong one, mm -hmm. which I completely always got. I never even. I don't, they have a lot of animosity about it. Mm -hmm. It was like, he, I got a hair on my face, it's driving me crazy. Um, and if he was bothering me, he was leaving everybody else alone. But it was fall, I think it was a cold day, and he, he went to walk down the river. Can I go, Dad? No. But he was smiling. Can I go, Dad? No. And he was smiling, and I thought, well, I'm playing the game. Can I go? But I kept going. Yeah. We get to the river. Can I go in? No. Smiling. So the foot goes in. Fully clothed, and it's cold. <laughs> and we played the game for 10 minutes. Can yeah. I go in? Can I go in? Can yeah. And I'm up to it. <laughs> <laughs> and he still said no, right? Can I go in? <laughs> and when I came out, he beat the shit out of me for going in. Oh, for crying out loud. Because it was a game. But And I knew it doing it. Mm -hmm. But it was like, no, you're not going to win this round. Mm -hmm. You're doing this to see if I'll back down. Mm -hmm. And I was not backing. And that's how I always got in trouble. Yeah. Because I remember getting the getting a beaten and then going home and getting trouble by my mother for going to the river. <laughs> like, and I won. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> but that was the things that I remember. Yeah. You know, and being told not to do something, but always with that little bit of I dare you. Oh. So yeah. my sisters never did. Yeah. But you can't do that to somebody like me. Yeah. We didn't, you know, we didn't have, the only, we had the rule, if you, if I was down on Main Street, not to go over the railroad tracks. Yeah. That's, we could not go over yeah. the railroad tracks. I lived on the other side of the railroad yeah, tracks. Yeah, I know. We didn't, <laughs> I didn't know why, and yeah. I had no idea, because no one else said it. You say, you can't go by there. Um, but I could go anywhere And else. everybody in town had that rule. Yes, Not I to go over the railroad did. tracks. Yeah. Now, when we talked before about the difference in class between South Dighton and North Dighton. Mm -hmm. How did you know that? Oh, you could feel it. Are you kidding me? Now how? See, they, those kids had stuff. They were well dressed. They went places. They had nice cars. You know. Yeah. And it was a, they looked down on, especially if you were a fine person. Yes. <laughs> yes. That was the worst of the yeah. worst. Um, that's. You know, that's just and do you th where did the kids get that? Because now I know they had to have gotten it from the parents. Yep. But I don't remember. I don't. Well, I don't remember the, the North Dayton parents having any interaction with the South Dayton parents. Did they have anything to do with the North Dayton? Oh, parents? North Dayton. You're right. You're right. Let me think. Yeah, it's North Dayton. Uh, mm, I don't even no. think there were any town functions where the two. I remember them being a block party at the ICI in South Dayton. Mm -hmm. It was all South Dayton people. Mm -hmm. Nobody from the North Dayton, like St. Joseph's Church. Yeah. There would never be any interaction. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know where you're Catholic. Was there interaction between the North Dayton parish and the South Dayton no. parish? No. No. I didn't go to church very much. <laughs> yeah, we did as Protestants, but we, there was a, a North Dayton Protestant Church, and ours, and it was two different worlds. 
That church looked like it had money. Yeah. Our church was this poor little yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, I remember when I first met, and she asked me a zillion questions. <laughs> and she, um, and I said to her that I thought there was a distinction between having grown up in North Dayton and having grown up in South Dayton. Yeah. And she just wouldn't accept that at all. She said, I, no, there wasn't. It was. I remember such a distinctive class difference where I was always intimidated by the North Dayton people because they always looked like a, cl a different mm -hmm. class. Yeah. And it's so strange to think within your same town, but North Dayton had manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And a sophomore. When my mother started taking me to some place and buying me the skirts and the loafers and the sweaters and, you know, finally, yeah. like, <laughs> hey, I look like everyone else. <laughs> you know, because I didn't have that stuff. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, she must have recognized something because she did take me yeah. every year to buy some of this stuff. You know, you felt more comfortable, but you were always thinking these people are better than I am. Yeah. yeah, I always thought that. And it's funny because my mother made all of our clothes. Even in high school, she made the skirts. Now, they were beautiful. She mm -hmm. was a seamstress. But they were still made by her. Mm -hmm. And they looked better than what other people were wearing. Sure. And it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Yeah. You know? And then I started sewing my own clothes. Mm -hmm. And I have a, in the yearbook, there's a picture of an outfit I made. And I looked at it. I looked damn good. Mm -hmm. But I looked like nobody else. Yeah. Well, that's what I always liked. Yeah. I always wanted to look like nobody else. Yeah, no, I would like to <laughs> once have fit in. Yeah, but I've always done that with the jewelry and the, yeah. you know, the silliness and the this and that and the boots and, yeah. you know, I've, I've done that my whole life. And my mother would say, you know, when you were a little girl, you used to tell me you were going to buy me a silver, shiny dress when you grew up. That's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I wanted. <laughs> now, if you remember my story of Karen, when she started work and bought my mother a washing machine, and I don't know what else she bought her. But my, you know, she was all that in a bag of chips because she was pitching yes. in. So when I started working at 14 at Oak Hill, mm -hmm. I went into Dana's Furniture and Time. I walked from Dayton. Mm -hmm. My father had worked at Dana when I was a very young girl, and mm -hmm. I remember that. And I walked in, 12 years old, 14 years old, introduced myself, told him I was Dawn Rose's daughter, and I wanted to buy a chair for my mother. And I, could I put it on layaway? And they did not laugh at me. Mm -hmm. They let me pick out a chair and put it on layaway, and every Saturday after Oak Hill, I walked and put $2 on it. Isn't that good? It took me a year. Yeah. I still remember it was $147, which was like eight or 900 now. Yeah, of course. And I had it delivered, and I remember standing there so proud of myself, and came in, and my mother said, that chair is so ugly. I hope when you, <laughs> when you leave, you take it with you. What? And it was a, 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 a green tweed... Um, recliner, a rocker recliner, and they'd never had new furniture ever. You must have been devastated. It took me over a year of walking there in the winter because wow. I wanted once to be as good as Karen. Wow. And I took it with me when I got married. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hate it? It wasn't. Well, <laughs> and I picked it up because it was her style, not mine. Yeah, yeah. Holy shit. A lazy boy. That's what I was trying to think. It was a late. Do you remember how lazy boy yes. was? Oh, yes. All that? Yes. That's unbelievable. See, our parents had, they had no guidance no. as parents. No. Because my two grandmothers were just horrible people. Yeah. <laughs> I've told you that, you know, my family's overseas, so, but um, dad's family was um, horrible, you know, again. And my grandmother didn't want us in the house because we were German. And uh, yes, my mother yes. and father would visit, and we'd have to sit outside on the porch. Oh, my dear Lord, yeah. And I'm thinking, what well, my mother is the real German here. Why is she allowed in? Um, and even back then, I knew that being German was not a bad thing. It's, and, you know, all my life I've said, it's the same as being Republican or Democrat. Yeah. You could be German and be Nazi. You yeah. can be German and not. Right. I don't understand why the world can't handle that. My, my family was not Nazis, and in fact, they you know, help people in the Underground Railroad get out. But she did not want us in the house. 
I told you she lined, She went to Disney World, lined up all the grandchildren, and gave presents, and Karen and I got skipped. We had to stand there. Oh, my God. And my grandfather, I got along with Sola. He called me Pest, because I was a pest. <laughs> um, him and my uncles all called me Pest. But they would come out and sit and talk to me. Yeah. I'm, yeah, see, and your father did... Nothing your about father, it. Yeah, my father, was, own mother did nothing about it. Yeah, your father never said she's my wife. Oh, because she was in there. Yeah, she went in. These are my kids. Yeah. <laughs> but my mother was the kind of person, she would, like me, she would put her back up and just walk in. Yeah. Like, if he's going, so am I. But she didn't care that her kids got ostracized. If somebody had ever said, Mommy, your kids have to sit over there, I would yeah, have said, say, oh, yeah, you. we'll just go outside. Yeah, yeah. we're going. Yeah, we're going. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it's not going. respect, it's fear. Yeah, it was fear. You know, oh, absolutely. And I don't understand that only because what's the worst that can happen? She'll raise a hand. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Take your shot because that's what. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Andrea. Yep. Make it good. Yeah. <laughs> Make it count. I taught. That's what I taught my boys. Yeah. Don't ever fight, but if you do, win. Yeah. Because that's the only way it's going to end. Yeah. Why don't you guys go outside? Or if we went in, sit on the couch and don't breathe. Don't move. Yep. There was that, too. Were you taping? The whole time. Oh, yeah, 99. I have to pee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Susanna left a while ago, and I have been sitting here going through the video and trying to cull it down and have it still make sense. I know it was all over the place. My aim was to show you where I come from, and I think... We did that by giving you a whole lot of background of how we were raised. You know, being raised in the 50s and 60s was a whole lot different than the world is today. And when I hear about older people struggling with all the changes in the world, I completely understand. It's really hard to grow up with a set of beliefs that you've come to the conclusion were wrong. And a lot of the things that Susie and I talked about we would never condone today, but it's where we came from. So I hope you understand it. I hope you enjoyed the history of it. I know here in my background can sometimes be a little unsettling, but please understand that it made me what I am today, and I'm kind of happy with what I am today. So life is good. I hope all of your life is good. I appreciate you being here. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.